This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from opentuition.com. Okay, this is the third and the final lecture on chapter 13, uh, and we're dealing with um, process costing, the work in progress problem. And if you remember in the last lecture, uh, I did example two, which was uh, the first in, first out approach to the valuations. But I did say there's an alternative way, which I think you will agree is actually rather easier and is a better way, uh, but it's called the weighted average approach. Weighted average. And to explain and to highlight the differences in the approach, I'm going to use example three, which is exactly the same figures as we used in the last lecture in example two, exactly the same, but this time we're going to do it this weighted average way. And so, uh, well, I don't know how long it is since you watched the last lecture, but a quick rundown. During July, we incurred the following costs, and it was on 30,000 units. Uh, at the beginning, though, of the month, there were 15,000 units of work in progress, valued as follows. And at the end of the month, there were 5,000 units of work in progress. Well, we start off very much the same as before. Uh, you must sort out what's happening to the units. And I know we did it last time, but <clears throat> it may be a while since you watched the last lecture. Uh, and again, it doesn't matter. I always do a little quick workings tier count. The opening work in progress, <clears throat> we already had. 15,000 units sitting there. Uh, this month, in July, we started another 30,000. And so we were hoping to finish, <coughs> excuse me, 45,000 units. What happens to those units? Well, either they are finished, or they're still being worked on at the end of the month as closing work in progress. Now, what does the question tell us? It doesn't tell us how many are finished, but it does say the closing work in progress at the end of July, 5,000 units. And since we were working on 45,000, the remaining 40,000, the missing figure, They must have been the finished units. Having sorted that out, we can now get straight on with our costings. Uh, and as usual, because of different stages of completion, um, do it in columns. So there's materials, there's labour and overheads. And what are the costs involved? Well, we know how much we spent this month. On materials, we spent 24,900. On labour and overheads, 20,075. But here is the real big difference. The last time, we just looked at this month's cost, and it did create a problem, I mentioned at the end, uh, because the work in progress, some of it had been at last month's cost, some at this month's cost, it got a bit messy. Well, on a weighted average approach, we take all the costs involved in this month's units, which is not simply what we spent this month, which was finishing some, doing some stuff to finish starting some. In addition, we've got the amount already spent on the opening work in progress. And if you look at the question, <clears throat> there, were, there were already 15,000 units of work in progress, and they were valued as follows, so we'd already spent 9,000 on materials, and we'd already spent 1250 on labour. So the total that's been spent on all the units 
floating around this month. On materials, 20, sorry, 33,900. And labour and overheads, 21,325. Now it's that that's the big difference. FIFO, we only take this month's money. Weighted average, we take this month plus the amount already spent on the work in progress. And we then say, what did we spend that money on? That 9,000 and the 1250, that money was spent starting the opening work in progress. It was spent last month doing the first bit of the work. The 24,900 and the 20,075, part of that money was spent finishing the opening work in progress. So included in that total is the full cost of all the opening work in progress. Uh, there were how many? 15,000. We've got the full cost of all of them. Again, 9,000, that was the cost of starting them, including the 24,900, is the cost of finishing them. So we've got the full cost of them. We've also got the full cost of those that were done from start to finish. And those that done start to finish, I didn't work out because we don't actually need it as you're about to see. But you see, of the 40,000 that were finished, 15,000 were already started. The other 25,000 were started this month. But the reason I didn't need that, and the reason you can omit this bit, is surely we've got the full cost of all the finished units. The bit that was spent last month plus what was spent this month, we've got the full cost of all of them. In addition, though, we've got the cost of starting the closing work in progress. There were 5,000. Uh, well, for materials, bare 100% finished, so we've had the full 5,000 units worth. And for labour and overheads, We've only done 50% of the work this period, so 50% of 5,000, the equivalent units to 500. And so the units, the materials, 45,000, sorry, yes, 45,000. For labour and overheads, 42,500. And therefore, the cost per unit, well, for materials, 33,900 for 45,000 units is 7,533. Three. But don't worry, in the exam, Almost certainly come to a nice figure, or you'll be taught to round it to the nearest cent. Uh, here, I didn't pick nice figures, it's because I'm using the same example, same numbers as the previous one. Uh, anyway, for labour and overheads, 21,325 total cost, 42,500 equivalent units. 21,325 divided by 42,500. Again, it's not a nice figure, 0 0.5018. And so the full cost of a finished unit, add the two together, one dollar two five five one. Which I'm not, I can't wind back to example two, 
but is it a, a bit lower than it was last time because last time we were only working out this month's cost per unit and I did make the point last month things seemed to be cheaper uh, here uh, well we work out the overall cost of all the units we're, we're averaging it and now let's do our valuations and here's where the whole thing gets so much easier first of all the finished items well we no longer need to keep the opening work in progress separate from the new ones we've worked out the average cost and so how many were finished was it 40,000 yeah the 40,000 finished items will all be valued at this average cost and therefore a total of Fifty thousand two zero four. It's so much easier. Five four. We have to mess around keeping the old ones separate from the new ones. Uh, the work in progress. Oh, it doesn't really get any faster here. The closing work in progress. Sorry. Uh, here it doesn't really get any faster. Um, you know, if it's part finished, we'll value at part cost. So we have to keep the two bits separate. Materials. Well, there are 5,000 units. There are 100% finished. So it'll be 100% of the materials cost. 0 0.7533. Uh, and I'm keeping this to the nearest dollar. So 3767. Uh, labour and overheads, again there are 5,000, but since they're only 50% finished, we'll only value at 50% of the labour cost, which is 0 0.5018. 1, 2, 5, 4. So the work in progress, 3, 7, 6, 7, 1, 2, 5, 4. Five zero two one, and so there we are. Uh, however, since I've done it every single time, I will do one final tier count. The opening work in progress fifteen thousand units. And the total value, 9,000 material, 12.50 labour and that's from the question. So 10 to 50. This month's costs, materials for 30,000 units is 24,900. Uh, labour and overheads, 20,075. So we're working on 45,000 units. Uh, and the total cost of all of them fifty five two two five. Uh, what happened to the units? We finished forty thousand. We had closing work in progress of 5,000. And how have we valued them? Uh, the finished ones have been valued at 50,204. The closing work in progress this time at 5,021. The total 55,225. Oh, wonderful. All right, that's it. Um, you'll see it said on both those examples for uh, three, two and three, assume no losses. In fact, the examiners said they will be kept separate. So you are likely to be examined some questions on losses separately, some questions on work in progress, uh, but you won't get questions which have work in progress and losses in the same question. In real life, obviously, it can happen. 
uh, but not in the exam. Um, just one last bit of terminology. In this question, example three, there was the labour and overheads as one figure. That's fine. Uh, well, you quite often see that referred to as conversion costs. So, you know, the question could have been given you as materials we spent 24,900. Conversion costs, 20,075. Conversion costs is another word for labour and overhead, so it doesn't affect the arithmetic at all. Uh, but that's all it means. All right, well, that's chapter 13. On process costing, though, we have the introduction. I've dealt with losses, normal and abnormal. I've dealt with work in progress, uh, FIFO and weighted average. The final process costing topic, though, is something called joint products, uh, which, as you'll see, although it comes into the heading process costing, it's actually a standalone thing. It's, uh, well, I don't think you'll have a problem with it, but that's the next chapter. <laughs>